Thank you for tuning in this episode of Channel Surfing. Today I want to talk about inboard versus outboard. Close your eyes, hear the voice within. Call it, heavy. So I'm down here at the Seattle Boat Show, and I have right behind me R27 outboard and an RT29. So obviously the uh, RT27 is powered by an outboard, and 29 is powered by a diesel inboard using Volvo. So let's take a look at the running gear first. So the first thing to point out on the RT27 outboard is there's not a lot of anodes. Um, to worry about it. and there's uh, the trim tabs would have anodes there's the handlebar anode that's underneath the uh, transom and then the last anode is called the trim anode the last anode is called the trim anode and it's uh, right above the propeller and I also point out that uh, Yamaha actually deprecated the uh, trim anode with the fin that you would adjust. Um, you can actually get that and it'll fit on the on the F300, but if you look at Yamaha's documentation, they've deprecated and they just went go with the flat anode um, shown here. One of the other cool things that uh, Yamaha did, I want to say it was either last year or before, probably 20 21 or 2022, I think it's 2022 model um, on their lower units, is when the engine exhausts, the exhaust comes out the prop, right? Comes out of the center. So then when you go in reverse, if the exhaust is coming out the center, then the blades are biting into the air bubbles of the exhaust, and therefore they're not getting a good grip of the water, and the boat slips in reverse and doesn't have good reverse. So what they do now is they take these vents above right here, and when you put the boat in reverse, they redirect the exhaust to come out up here above the prop. That way the prop is actually biting into clean water in reverse. It's supposed to improve reverse thrust quite a bit on the boats. And now let's take a look at the running gear on an RT-29. So normal uh, trim tab zincs. That you would have. Um, you have a diver's dream anode right there. There's a rudder anode down there. You've got the rudder. You've got a four blade prop. Uh, there's a stern thruster. Right? Um, if you think about it, when you run an inboard in reverse, then there's no water going across the rudder because the water is going forward on the boat. So uh, reverse uh, direction Steering the boat in reverse is more challenging on an inboard, so they give you a stern thruster to kick the back end over. Um, the outboards really don't need a stern thruster because you've got a 300 horse um, outboard that's a stern thruster because you have directional control on the outboard. The other thing is there's a definite keel to the RT29, right, which would help it track in the water. Um, I'd almost argue to say that in uh, in rough seas, an RT-29 is probably going to do a lot better than the 27. Because <clears throat> this is the bottom of the RT-27, right? Um, it's more of a flat bottom. It's a planing hull, right? Um, but if you think about it, the, the big difference in cruising speeds is, you know, the... Uh, RT-29 is going to cruise 13, 14, 15 miles an hour. Wide open throttle is going to be about 20 miles an hour probably. Where the RT-27 with the outboard, um, she's going to be comfortable cruising 25 to 30 miles an hour. Wide open throttle about 40 uh, with a three blade um, aluminum or three blade stainless prop on her. Right, so the 
27 foot outboard is really looking for flatter water to go quicker because you wouldn't want to cruise at 30 miles an hour in three foot seas, right? Um, you know, the RT29 has also got a little bit more weight to it, you know, and with that defined keel, it's probably a much better ride, like I said, in bad seas where the R27, we're going to look for good seas and then uh, get there, uh, <clears throat> get to our destination pretty quick. The other thing with inboard versus outboard is storage, because obviously when you have an inboard engine, underneath this hatch is the entire engine. Whereas on the, on the outboards, that's all storage space, right? So it leaves a large amount of, of storage space to, to put more stuff, add more weight, slow the boat down. You know the routine. <laughs> Uh, I'd say operating cost between inboard and outboard is probably very similar. Um, you know, cost of oil changes and just your routine maintenance and all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't expect it to be too much of a delta between them. Uh, me personally, I think the outboards are easier to work on. Um, you know, I can I do all my own routine maintenance and stuff, um, but that's not to say you couldn't do it on a diesel inboard either, right? Um, for just the routine maintenance. So it really just comes down to preference, cruising speed. Um, diesel versus gas on fuel efficiency. In a gallon of diesel, there's actually uh, more energy than there is in a gallon of gas. Um, I want to say it's like, I don't know, 10, 15% difference, uh, which usually means diesel will get a little better fuel efficiency than gas. Um, you know, all things considered the same. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, gas is, is relatively safe on a boat. You know, people talk about you know, gas fires versus, uh, you know, boats catching fire with gasoline on the boat. Um, there was a time, and there still are boats out there, that were, um, had a gas inboard engine with a carburetor, which means the gas fumes are exposed inside the boat. Um, gas is heavier than air and it'll settle, and that's where you had the blower, you had to run for five minutes on your boat. <clears throat> um, before you start the engine, or you could risk blowing up the boat. And there's no shortage of YouTube videos out there of that happening. Um, all the boats today um, with outboards, they're all fuel injected, uh, with the exception of the kicker. But here again, the outboard's not inside the boat, it's outside the boat, right? So there is no exposed um, gas. If you ever smell gas on an outboard boat, you've got a leak somewhere and you should go find it, right? So, so safety-wise, I think diesel and gas, um, by today's standards, at least in you know, the Ranger Tuck product lines, um, I think they're both equally as safe. So it really just comes down to preference, you know, um, for what you're looking for, for inboard versus outboard. The one other thing that I do really like on the inboards is st uh, storing the dinghy. So the dinghy actually connects right here, and it'll be right on the transom. Um, there's no outboard to get in the way, so there's no fancy rack that you have to have for the... Uh, for the dinghy storage. And then the deployment of the dinghy is, is relatively easy on the, the inboards. So that, uh, please make sure you click the uh, like and subscribe button because that really does help us out a lot. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed watching this video, click the screen to watch another.